Hi everybody, I'm Mustafa Hirji, the Acting Medical Officer of Health for Niagara Region Public Health. One of the questions that you've been asking a lot about is to see municipal breakdowns of our cases in Niagara Region Public Health. And that's something I think we've been really wanting to provide, but the challenge for us is that whenever we release data, we need to do it in a way where we ensure that privacy is maintained and that particularly requires that we have enough numbers so that we can be sure of that. And unfortunately, with 12 local area municipalities in Niagara, there's some municipalities that had relatively small numbers of cases. And we had to wait until every municipality had enough cases so that we could safely release that data and ensure everyone's privacy would be protected. Fortunately, we've now received that point, and so we're able to release that data. And I want to quickly walk you through some of what we now have on that website. So first off, if you're navigating that website, you'll now see that we have this horizontal bar chart here showing every municipality as well as the number of cases per 10,000 people in that municipality. And that gives us a really easy way to compare what has been the difference of infections in different municipalities by controlling for the amount of people there. If you hover over any one of these bars, you can actually see the total number of cases in that little box that pops up, so you can see how many cases are in your municipality as well. Now, one of the big stories of Niagara has been that a lot of our cases have been linked to outbreaks in long-term care homes, retirement hospitals, in our healthcare facilities. And so to the right of this horizontal bar chart, we have this donut graph here that really shows that breakdown. And you can see a little over 49% of our cases have been linked to these healthcare outbreaks. And what we actually do is, so you can see what the impact of this is, is that you can actually click on parts of this donut chart and see the impact of that onto our uh, local area municipalities. So for example, if we pick, uh, click on the outbreaks side of the chart, you'll see that the data on the left side in the municipal graph, it all starts to filter. And you can see that Niagara Falls and Welland, particularly we know had a few very large outbreaks. And you can see that a lot of their cases are actually due to these outbreaks, actually a majority of their cases. If we go back and now click on the community cases that we've seen, we can actually see that Welland and Niagara Falls are no longer particularly impressive in terms of their numbers of cases. They're really much more in line with other municipalities. And so everything looks fairly similar across different parts of Niagara. As well, below that graph, we've also created the interactivity to filter by the type of exposure people have had. So something people are very interested in is, is there a lot of travel-related cases in places that happen to border the United States? And so if you click on the travel bar here on that graph, you'll again see the data by municipality filters, and you can actually see that our border regions relatively haven't had that many travel cases. It's actually a place like Pelham that has actually had more international travel related cases than other regions. So that's a way to get some insight of what may be happening in your local area municipality. The one last thing I want to point out here is that underneath this bar graph for municipalities, we also have the option to click on active cases so you can see where there are currently active cases in Niagara. And really a take home here is that we see active cases in every part of Niagara still. I really want to emphasize though that there are a few limitations to this data that we're providing. Cases in their geography and which municipality they're associated with is really about which municipality people live in. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that's where they got infected. You can live in a municipality and you go to work in a second municipality and on your way there, you maybe stop off for coffee in a third municipality. And maybe you do your shopping at a fourth municipality before you get home. And of course, we have no idea which of those four municipalities is where you actually got infected. And I think that's really important when you think about our healthcare outbreaks that, well, of course, residents of long-term care homes and retirement homes were in the municipalities where that outbreak occur. The healthcare workers or hospital patients may have their home address in a completely different municipality to where they actually are experiencing the outbreak and becoming infected. And so that can necessarily skew the data. And so you should interpret by caution where we're seeing cases by municipality. We also need to remember that by the time a case is reported to us in public health and we're able to put it up on that website, it actually can have been probably about two weeks since someone actually had the transmission to lead to their infection. Because after transmission, it takes about a week before you become ill. 
a couple days to contact your healthcare provider, get your test done a few more days before you get your test result back. It's probably two weeks or sometimes even longer if there's been some delays in there before you actually show up in our data. So the, what we're seeing in terms of active cases or cases is not a reflection of where the risk is right now in the community. And lastly, of course, we're talking about cases that we know about and we've reported out publicly. And of course, the first thing we need to learn about a COVID-19 case is we isolate that case so they can spread the infection to others. So the cases we're showing here are actually cases that are isolated. And the risk that we all experience is actually from the cases that have not yet been identified. The ones that are unknown out in the community, and we have no idea, of course, to know how many of those are. I think the real takeaway we should take from this data is that, of course, we know there's still COVID-19 out in the community, and we know that every municipality of Niagara is being affected by COVID-19. We are all in this together, and we all need to keep doing our part to make sure we stop the spread of infection, and we're taking the precautions to keep ourselves safe. So we need to keep doing physical distancing, we need to keep washing our hands often, we need to keep taking precautions and stay home if we don't have something purposeful to be doing outside. So we make sure we keep ourselves safe, we keep our family and others around us safe, and we're not creating that interaction in the community that allows the spread of infection. So I hope everybody enjoys looking at this new municipal data and take some time to play around with the interactive features we have around this data, as well as all of the other data we have on our website. And in the coming weeks, we can continue to expect to see more and more data released by public health as we see more and more numbers and we're able to continue to safely release data without concerns around privacy. Thank you so much.